Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. So still playing. Bring it on in, y'all. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Y'all know how we do it. Y'all know how we rolling. No, I'm not even gonna fight with that. Bring it on in, everybody. Bring it on in. Glad to see y'all. Glad to see y'all. Waiting on some more people. Waiting on some more people. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, Cree? Good morning, Cree. One of the fastest long distance walkers I've ever met in my life. Cree could walk about 10 miles in two minutes. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We know some more people to get in. I hope y'all had a, a good night's nice rest. I hope you had a real good night nice, good night rest. Cause look, sleep is important. Sleep is real important. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Check on in, everybody. Check on in. Good morning. Glad to see the same faces. And we're gonna see some new faces today, but glad to see some new faces on this morning. Good morning, everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so for all the people that's in here, y'all know how we do. We started off with a little bit of music and affirmation. What's going on? Good morning, Bree. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So y'all know how we normally do. We got the music rolling. So for today's uh, morning affirmations, before we start with anything, I'm going to say a phrase and I want you guys to finish it. So if I say I am and you guys say out loud to yourselves, whatever you feel as though you need to say. So if I am, she said, I've been waiting and watching since eight. I, I come on at 815 in between eight. Well, I'm a little late today. And I'm explaining for that why later on today. But every day is typically 8:15. Uh, but y'all know how we normally do. So if like like I was saying before, if if I say I am, make sure it's not too loud. It's loud in my ears. Yeah. So if I say uh, I am, you guys to say uh, on your end. You don't have to specifically say what I'm saying, but like if you need to, like I am courageous. You know, I am brave. I am happy. You know, I am free. Whatever you guys need to say. So we're going to start our morning off. We're going to start this video off with our uh, positive affirmations. All right. I am. I will be. I have always been. I am looking forward to. I receive. I am moving on from. I am greater than all my needs are. I have plenty more. I bind. I bind. And I loose. And I loose. I am and I will be good morning once again everybody good morning good morning that was our positive affirmations of the day I see some new people coming in so if you are unfamiliar with what we do so one of the newest things that we are starting to do is as the music is playing before we even start the talks before we start the discussions we like to do positive affirmations so I'll start a phrase and then you finish it because what that does is we're trying to open up things we are trying to manifest things in our lives and we're trying to start our day with commanding with whatever we need to go on throughout the day. If you just wake up without having any type of meditation, prayer, gathering yourself notes or something in the morning, you just try to go out for the day. The day is going to be the day and it's, and it's going to get you. You know, you're going to go through the day. But, you know, if you start your day off, you know, with the right things and you, you start claiming your day and speaking over your day, you have that much more of a chance. You have that much more of a possibility to uh, have a better day because you've spoken into existence because you already decreed and declared what your day is excuse me and who you are but um just a little update about me before we start man i did a um I, and i feel like that's why we had such a great a great um let me turn that off that's why we had such a great live stream yesterday a great conversation i was on a fast i did a 24-hour fast yesterday i did well it was a little bit longer than that because i didn't really technically eat until like this morning at about I want to say about like eight, no, 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 by like seven thirty. So it was a little over twenty four hours, but I didn't eat nothing. 
All I did was drink distilled water. And when I tell you, I didn't, I didn't get hungry. I mean, I'm used to fasting, but like I haven't done it in some months. And like I wasn't hungry. I felt good. I felt light. I felt happy. My mood was good. Man, it's like when you don't have nothing inside of you, like no food and your intestines aren't working and they get a break, you get to actually enjoy the rest of your body. You know, there's certain feelings and certain emotions and certain like just spiritual flows that you tap into when you just not eat. And I don't I mean, people, they, they have scientists, scientists that have explained it, but it's like it, I feel like it's higher than that. You know, it, it's just real dope. But I'm coming off of a fast. Uh, shout out to everybody that um, that's just been supporting. And that's been knowing what's going on behind the scenes and that's pushing with me as well to get to where we have to go and like where I'm trying to get this brand and where I'm trying to get our community to shout out to everybody who's participating. Um, and today we're going to dive into because yesterday you guys really like talking about dreams. So today we're going to dive into common dreams and what they mean. So I know yesterday I kind of we kind of went not really off the deep end, but we really was talking a lot about. And also, if you guys have any type of particular dreams or any type of um anything that really stuck out to you in the dream. Either you can comment right now in the comment sections or you could DM. I'm going to still get the notifications and we'll uh, we'll discuss that if you want to know what that really means or what you're, what you're actually seeing in that, situ in that situation. But I say all that to say, my bad, y'all, I'm readjusting something real quick. I say all that to say, bye y'all, um, dreams mean something, you know, and people and things inside of your dreams, believe it or not, they nine times out of ten, they are reflections of you. Things you need to grab, like especially like people you haven't seen in a long time, or just random people, or people you've never seen before in dreams. You know, they're either reflections of you, or they're symbolisms or symbols of things that um that represent represent certain things in your life. So a lot of a lot of common dreams people have are like them falling, right? So to dream that you are falling represents like feelings of losing control. You may feel insecure or unable to get like get a grip on the issue, right? So an area, of, an area of your life may be getting out of hand, uh, difficulty letting go of um, power, control, or status. Um, you may feel insecure or lack support in your uh, waking life. You may be experiencing a major struggle or overwhelming problem, a fear of losing everything, going under, or, uh, or of appearing as a total failure, feeling hopeless to stop an unpleasant impending change. You know, and when you really look at like the grand scheme of, oh, I'm falling in a dream or, oh, I'm really like just going through. And, and before we even dive into that, do know that, like I said the other day, dreams are messages, you know, and dreams are malleable. So dreams are typically things that's, that's there to warn you and are to help you or urge you to either pray about it, speak affirmations about it, you know, like really try to be aware of certain things. But when you going back to the whole falling thing, when you really think of when you really compare um, the actual meaning of you falling in a dream or, or, or like, you know, how people be falling like from the sky or like just, you know, it'd be them impending or I'm about to hit the ground type thing. You pop, oh, and you pop up like that. It's one of them situations to where it's like, when you really compare it to what it really means, it's, it's basically the same thing. I don't, to me, I don't feel like it's that deep. I feel like granted there is some interpretation that you need to grab from it, but it's not really that deep because anybody who's falling in the natural, you know, it's like, it's it's when they they mention uh, impending change and stuff like that, fear of losing everything, going under, and all that type of stuff. When you've fallen, especially from a great height, that's all that's within you. You know, like, like you're you're feeling all these thoughts of what ifs and what may be and what may not be and all of that. Please let me know if y'all can still hear me. I just remember I had to cut off this uh the music. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of the things to where it's like it very much so matches up with what, what you may think fallen represents in real life. Cause fallen dreams may also be a warning signal about a need to start being more cautious about your actions in uh, waking life. It may also reflect the situation in waking life that you feel to be a life or death crisis, a fear of losing social or financial status, feeling knocked off your pedestal in life. You know, so with that being said, you got to make sure when you start getting the warning signs like that, or if you start feeling those things, it's o it's okay that you feel that way. I mean, your dreams are is your subconscious, you know, like your dreams are trying to talk to you. But at the end of the day, know that these are things that you can, I, I'm not going to say control, but you can deal with properly. And not only you can deal with those things properly, it's better for you to run into your fears and try to understand them and understand what you're going through rather than running away and like, oh, that was just a bad dream. Let me shake it off and no. You typically want to make sure that as you're going through life and if you're getting all of these type of messages in life and stuff like that, that you are actually um, diving into it 
you know, like you want to make sure that you're not running away from your problems, but fixing them and solving them. Because the more you run away from them, either the problems multiply and they become worse or you just fall into a situation of a, a endless cycle of it never getting done or never getting fixed or you never really facing your problems. A lot of people are trying to walk into certain things in their life, but they, they don't want to face the problems because the problems typically tend to be themselves, you know, and we have to leave this ideology of perfectionism. You know, when it comes down to ourselves, we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. You got to accept yourself for the good and the bad. And you have to work on the good just as much as you work on the bad, you know, because the flaws that what well, the quote unquote flaws that we have in life. It's not that they are flaws. It's typically like we have these reoccurring actions, behaviors or thoughts that tend to make us do things that we really shouldn't do or that they're not as beneficial for us as they should be or they're just toxic for us. You know, but going into another topic um, or another form of dream, let's say you're being chased. So to dream that you're being chased represents issues or situations that you are avoiding facing, like we just said, are confronting something you may feel is impossible to overcome or defeat. You may feel stressed or threatened. It may also reflect something you don't want to acknowledge. And let's pause right there. So like I said before, the reason and, and see, you got a lot of a lot of people have like these reoccurring bad dreams. And it's like it gets to the point because you got to think about it. If you don't start facing these problems and you start having these bad dreams. Right. Well, it also affects your real life, because when you're not fixing the problem or trying to address or find the problem. Two, now you can't enjoy your sleep no more because you're like, man, I don't want to go back to sleep. The same dream keep happening. The same stuff keep happening. I keep feeling the same thing. I keep getting the same adrenaline rush. It keeps messing me up. You know, so if you're if you're if you're not trying to overcome, if you're not trying to do something that's going to help you get past this, it's not something that's going to keep happening. Are you going to passively walk into what you're supposed to when it comes down to, um, fixing that problem or something like that. But at the end of the day, you really need to grab a hold of moving forward or that process because um, it may also reflect something you don't want to acknowledge. You may have uh, anxiety, strong fears, insecurities, or guilt, situations you find emotionally dangerous. Your actions in the chase dream parallel your waking life reactions to pressure, fear, or stress. So basically, your body, your mind, body, and soul is telling you, okay, how you act when you're being chased in your dreams is typically how you act when you're going through certain things in your real life. So with that being said, the signs are there, the actions and the precautions and the acknowledgements that you need to make. They're already in the dream. Instead of looking at the dream as, oh, I was chasing, I'm having a bad time or blah, blah, blah. This, that and the third look at it as, OK, well, what was I doing? Because like I said yesterday, make sure you're finding what sticks out to you whenever you're dreaming. Like when you wake back up, what's the first thing you remember about the dream? And like, don't be scared to really go into great detail about it. You know, like I said before, if you don't have one, get your dream journal, use your iPad, use your notebook, whatever, like start writing that stuff down and start interpreting those things. Because there's a, you know, what's crazy. There's a lot of people, especially, the, especially a few people that's in here. There's a lot of people, your millions of dollars that you want is inside your dreams. Your, your happy relationship that you're chasing, that peace of mind and all this other stuff that you're trying to chase and be successful at in life is all in your dreams. But we don't take the time to really analyze and cherish every moment of our lives. Just because we sleeping and dreaming doesn't mean it's not happening. You know, you got to make sure that you treat your dreams and, and the things that you see in the dream world, treat them as tangibly as you would anything in the waking world. Whenever you up and stuff like well, consciously up and stuff like that, because there's man, there's so many gems when you really start diving into your dreams. There's so many gems. There's so many life lessons that you can. And that's the thing is that's the powerful thing about dreams. It's like I'm not going to say you don't need like a therapist, a counselor, nothing like that. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say they're useless or anything like that, because I mean, they're here for a reason. But when you start diving into dreams and symbolism inside your dreams and stuff like that, a lot of your problems that you've been trying to fix, the dream will tell you how to fix it. Because your dreams are reflections of your subconscious and your subconscious is going to be real with you. Your subconscious is not going to show you or your, sub your subconscious is not going to act in ego as you would if you were awake. Your subconscious is blunt, it's transparent and it's straight to the point. It can be cryptic and have a lot of symbols in it. But at the same time, your subconscious is going to tell you nine times ten specifically what you need to do, what you need to be aware of and how you need to do it. But not a lot of people have tapped into analyzing dreams you know they, they typically run from them or it's just a dream 
are like, oh, I'm just here to, to be away and blah, 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 blah. And then you got people like me who are very analytical about our dreams. And I'm a lucid dreamer. Like I said the other day, I could be in a dream watching, observing and consciously. I'm like, OK, well, yeah, this is happening. I need to memorize this. OK, cool. Because as you grow and as you start doing things like that, everything else starts starts to open back up. When I got when I really got back into analyzing my dreams and going back and having that. And it's so crazy because like I'll analyze my dreams. Right. And I have, like I showed y'all the other day, I got my little notes. I have everything, I, what it means, and this, that, and the third. And see, I randomly just open my Bible and go read something. It'll be a scripture that I didn't even plan on reading. It'll be a scripture that's that's in total parallel or, or in total need of what my dream just told me. You know, so it's like, it's okay to, die, man, dive in. Because the everything that you need is waiting on you. The moment you really start diving into what you need and you start diving into how it can get done or how you want it to get done or you find the specifics of it, life just starts changing. You know, life starts getting better and then you start getting better. So don't be afraid of your dreams. A lot of people fear dreams. A lot of people fear or are there are it stigmatized. Well, don't dive into that and don't blah, blah, blah. It's witchcraft and blah, 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 blah. Well, why are we having dreams then? If it's that evil or if it's something that we really shouldn't be dabbling in, why do I have dreams almost every night? You know, why do I if I pray about something, God gives me a dream. If I if I'm desiring something, I get a dream. If I'm worried about something, I get a dream. That's a part of life. And I know for a fact I wasn't well, I'm speaking on me. I'm not I don't have an evil spirit. You know, I'm I'm not dabbling in no type of evil dark stuff. So and I've been having dreams since I was a kid. And that's when you're your most innocent. You know, like we really gotta take that's that's why it's it's real good to don't take like I, I get raising kids, right? Raise your kids, do the best you can do. But don't taint them from their their imagination, from their passion, from their interpretations, you know, because kids, you got to realize the more the more I'm not going to say oblivious, but I'm going to say that for the lack of better terms. The more oblivious you are to certain things in the real world, like kids are and how like they say ignorance is bliss and stuff like that. They really in tune with a lot of stuff like a lot of people like to joke around and be like, oh, yeah, well, them babies be what them babies be staring and looking at and they just be smiling and giggling. This, that, and the third and them babies be tapped in. Like for real, for real, like if they'll, they'll have days where them babies just all over the place, you know, it's like they crank y'all, they worry, they, they like they skittish. But like when you really like say you clean out your house, you really start praying over your house and start speaking things over your house and it gets calm enough. All of a sudden the baby's sleeping. All of a sudden the baby's at peace because they're in tune with because they I feel like they're the most powerful beings. Well, not the most aware beings when it comes down to being in between the natural and the spiritual world, because when you really think about a baby in the womb, right? Um, the amniotic fluid that they're flowing in whenever they're inside the womb. What most people don't realize is, yeah, a baby gets a lot of nutrients from the umbilical cord and stuff like that to where like they get their food and all of that. But the amniotic fluid determines it's, it's, a, it's a very spiritual, spiritual liquid because the amniotic fluid that they're in, it helps them determine what's going on outside. So like um, certain tastes, like if it gets bitter and stuff in there, it's like they're tasting and like they can literally taste the mother's anger. That's why it's not good to have such a like whenever you decide to lay down and make a baby with somebody. That's why you got to really choose your partner carefully, because how they treat you and the things that they put you through uh, during your pregnancy, the child can feel that because it's, it's, it's can feel the amniotic fluid and it, it changes. It gets rigid. It gets um, roughish. It gets all that type of stuff. You know, they taste in that. And they're floating in it. So whenever they say, oh, well, the baby feels that and the baby sees that and this, that and the third, they really are because they're going through all of those type of things. Whenever that fluid starts changing in there, that's why it's good to have you a partner that's going to sit there and be like, all right, cool. Well, you're having a bad day. You're pregnant, this, that and the third. So let me help you. Let me ease your day. You know, well, it's good to know what herbs to be taking. You know, well, let me give you this. Make sure you're on your macro roots. Make sure you're eating these type of fruits, like making sure because like what most people don't realize is that. It takes two to raise a child even before the child is here. You know, that's why my heart really goes out to a lot of single uh, single parents, especially single mothers, because it's like it's it's not just nine months of carrying a child. It's it's nine months of really dealing with the labor pains and dealing with, you know, the, the process of growing a child. You are literally growing a being for almost a full year, you know, and it takes emotional support to be with that person because what people don't realize is. When a woman is literally making a child from the bone, like you got to think about it. A woman's body is forming the literal bones of the child, the skin, the organs, the everything from scratch. They cooking a the baby from scratch. They making their own roof from scratch. And 
that takes a lot of minerals. That takes a lot of vitamins. That takes a lot of hormones because you're copying DNA. You're putting stuff. Your body's doing all this work. And if you don't have a partner that understands one, that understands what's going on and two, isn't there to support you, how you need to be supported during your pregnancy. It has a lot to do with how the child is born, when the child is born, the, the child's temperament, the child's personality, this, that, and the third. Now, don't get me wrong. The personalities typically come from the parents and stuff like that. But the better, the better taken care of you are holistically in the pregnancy is the better the delivery is going to be and the better the child is going to be and the better you because that's another thing i feel like people don't don't stress enough like i get it you know that we've been trying to take care of the, the child while i was in the womb now the child is here this then the third that's cool but we need to not lose focus on the mothers that have given birth to these children because it the hormone spikes the body changes the 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 mental changes the stuff that they go through that they don't really talk about that's why i say choose your partners wisely because you need somebody that you can talk to you need somebody that's going to not only be there for you emotionally and physically and spiritually but they're like even like whenever you feel like you need a partner to where it's like even when the the ugly side comes out when the hormones is raging or when your hormone levels are up and down and you just feeling really bright or really dark you need a partner that's going to be able to help you get through that and that's going to be able to understand because postpartum is real. You got to think about it. That stomach then stretched all the way out there. And not a lot of people know, okay, get your pumpkin seed all while they're pregnant, rub it upwards on the stomach and the uh, shea butter and all that to help the stretch marks, you know, to help the stomach uh, snatch back, to help the breast snatch back. And then, you know, they, they be sore from breastfeeding all their body trying to produce milk and stuff like that. People don't realize it don't pregnancy and well, yeah, I can say that pregnancy doesn't really end after the child is born because you're, you're, the body is still going through so many changes. You ever notice how people are like, well, I, didn't, I had a child and like it's like my body just ain't never snapped back. Yet. I just don't feel like myself. It's like I don't think about stuff the same. My emotions is just I'm just a different person. You are because the hormones didn't been all because people don't understand. It's like and I'm not going to go into the, this other stuff that can lead to this conversation. But I put it this way. Me personally, I don't like how people are playing with synthetic hormones these days because it it does a lot. As much as they say it doesn't do what they think it does or what they don't want, they don't want to say it does. Playing with these hormones is really messes with people's souls, minds, and bodies. You know, you didn't make this hormone. It's not. It didn't come from you. You know. So you and then when you put excess of let's say estrogen or testosterone and your levels are off and it's not balanced because. Even women have testosterone in their bodies, but it's a level of it. Even men have estrogen in their bodies, but it's a certain, it's a balance, you know? And if you're just pumping your body with these hormones and stuff like that, you know, it throws the natural balance of life off. But I go into that to say that hormones play a huge role in a pregnant woman's life, even after they've have a, they've had a child. And after they've had the child, excuse me, if you, if you haven't really taken the time to dive into that woman's mind, to really let her like you got to be her diary you have to be her notebook you have to be tentative you have to do even if she's unfamiliar with what's going on and you are because you did some research or whatever implement it because those little things make such a big difference people man you got mothers that kill themselves you got mothers that fall into dark depressions after having children it's like but i just had this most beautiful child make me so happy but you're neglecting the mother you know like you, you people got to realize that women especially mothers are a lot more than just breeders because i feel like this the world especially the medical field is starting to look at especially black women as just breeders oh y'all had your baby cool we'll tend to the child no i feel like pregnancy as a whole is like no not the wife didn't have a baby we had a baby you know take care of your child and take care of your wife or take care of your baby mama you know like and that, and i feel like that's that's what's missing because people like to say oh toxic masculinity and blah 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 to me, there's no such thing because real masculinity, a real masculine man is somebody who doesn't abuse his wife and our woman doesn't. Uh, he doesn't miss the opportunity to provide. He's there to support. He takes care of himself and he takes care of his family. That's a masculine man, a, a man who leads, you know, but we've lost. Like I said yesterday, we've lost a lot of that because of the way the system has pulled, especially the core of black families away from what it should be. You know, but when you have a real masculine man in your life who's holistic or who's trying, you know, and y'all decide to like live a life together, have kids, this, that, and the third, it makes the pregnancy easier. It makes raising, uh, and look, I, I, I haven't had a child, but I have God children and, you know, I'm raising my 
animals and all this, and I'm not trying to compare babies to animals, but what I'm saying is that, you know, I've just had a taste of that life. And I know for a fact, just me doing what I do as that, like that's hard. So you having a child already within yourself and raising a, a being is really hard. So you need a partner that's going to be real. You need a partner that's going to be there and support you. And you need a partner that actually, that's nothing. Have a baby with somebody who wants to have a baby. Because whenever you have a child with somebody who doesn't want to have a child and they just, cause, that's nothing I don't like. Because you got a lot of people like, let me rewind a little bit. You got people that have been have, that have gotten so used to seeing to to being raised by single mothers to where whenever they go into these relationships and they go into making babies with other people that's normal to them to watch the woman do all of the work if you notice and nothing's wrong with what i'm about to well just hear me out so if you notice with the way times is changing right now we have a lot more women going into entrepreneurship a lot more women making a bunch of money being the leaders of the household and i'm here for that I'm, I'm here for women empowerment and all that. But at the same time, I'm noticing a decline in men that should be parallel and are overseeing and providing that whole situation. Because I would, I don't know how I would feel, me personally, I don't know how I would feel to call myself a man. And even, I don't necessarily have to be making the same amount of money as my wife or more. I would hope to, but, and I would work to do so, but I need to contribute. If she's the breadwinner for the moment, or if that's just how life is going to be and that's how destiny set up, okay, she's the breadwinner, but I carry everything else. And that's what people need to understand. Stop comparing your marriages and your relationships to other people because they, they're not interchangeable. Everybody's relationship is different. You got some people that really come from households to where like their parents know how to put them in the line of wealth and money and that's just how they are. And they're okay with dating a quote unquote regular guy. And men need to understand like, okay, put the ego to the side. You know, like you just be have a real conversation with her. It's like, OK, I'm trying to get to this level. And if you're real partners, she's going to typically show you how to bring you into that that wealth and that type of stuff to where you can get it. But you have to have a drive because most women, they'll stay with a man off of his potential. And that's what I don't like, because it's like I get it. I get staying with somebody for their potential. But you have to be with somebody for their actions and what they've already doing. It's really, 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 really hard. To or I would say it would be a very risky thing to do to try to turn a grown man who's naturally lazy and don't have no hustle in him and stuff like that into a hustler. Because I know a person like me, my parents didn't have to do that. They really didn't have to do it. It's like I watched my dad go from work, well, working his way up from the research center to Halliburton and all his other types of stuff, like really working from the moment I was born up until now. Like, and he's still working. I watched my mom go from like working at it was singular wireless at the time to the school system and all, all this type of stuff. There never was a moment of, oh, well, I don't want to work and I don't want to blah, 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 blah. T to get the life that my parents have had, I watched them work. I watched them save. I watched them micromanage the money in the house and this, that, and the third. And not a lot of people learn like that. And but at the same time, it's the parent's job to rear the child at the same time. But most men, I'm 26. So. If you are a fellow man watching this, you know, and you you about my age or older, nobody should have to tell you to get up and go work. Nobody should have to. We got Google. We got you can walk. We got bikes. We got whatever. You got people on the street making it happen. You know, so like put your pride and your ego to the side and go do what you got to do to make this money or to provide or to become a better man and a better person because we are short. Right now, a lot of women like to say niggas ain't blank. I ain't gonna be doing all that cussing on here. Niggas ain't blank and niggas ain't blah, 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 blah. And to a fault is somewhat true because, you know, we have lost that masculine edge. We have lost that true definition of masculinity, you know, and it's dwindling. Like, I'm not saying, nah, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying like there's none of us, there's like no real masculine men out there. But at the same time, what I am saying is that, you know, Take these bad connotations off of masculinity and femininity. You know, like really what if man, look, if you a man and if you decide to be a man, you need to realize this is the role. And this is this is what most even though most people won't say it, this is what they're expect. This is what, what, what most women are expecting from a man in a relationship. Period. That's typically how it goes. You know, so if you're going to walk into the true definition of masculinity, you have to do such a thing. Because this definition of toxic masculinity and stuff like that, the two words don't even go together. They really don't. The word parent is horrible. Either, you, either you're a masculine man or you're not. 
you know, and I say all that to say, and I rewind and go make it full circle. Once you start doing those things and working on yourself as a man and trying to become a better man, think how much better your life would be with a woman who's about you. When you have a woman who's actually walking into her destiny and her purpose, when you have a woman that's serious, because that's one thing about a woman, when she decides to love you and really be with you and now well, I'm going to stick beside them, they be for real about that. And they're not playing behind stuff like that. So why would you waste her time? Why would you waste her body? Why would you miss, waste her mind and her spirit? So whenever she decides or y'all decide to have a child, and that's another thing, decide to have children. You know, granted, if you're in a position to where you can spontaneously have them and y'all cool with that and it works, that's fine. But, you know, really be prepared because a lot of people, a lot of people, hey, Miss Karen, a lot of people try to go into these situations of, man, that sounds like them dogs tearing up them dog on styrofoam plates. I'm going to deal with them after this. But it's one of those situations to where it's like the better you are to help the woman, to take care of the woman. She's And that's another thing, too. I feel like they don't, on so, especially on social media, they don't really show the true balance of a harmonious relationship between a man and a woman. Because it's like, well, I'm doing all of this for her. What's she doing for me? Well, what, pe what people like me, and other, and I'm pretty sure other men can vouch for this that that really know how to love and take care of their, their woman. You don't. It's so sad that most women gotta ask men to do certain things, but when you truly show a woman love, a real woman, some love, some attention, some provision, and you know y'all y'all friends and like y'all friends, homies, lovers, all of that, you don't have to ask her to do extra stuff. You really don't. They gonna automatically have your back. They gonna automatically sacrifice with you. They gonna automatically understand. They gonna automatically want to talk. You know, but that goes back to the communication I was talking about a few videos ago. It's good to communicate with your partner on a day to day basis. And the per look, me, I'm ask questions. If if I'm if I'm if I'm seeing something or I'm sensing something, I'm going to ask you about it. If you having a good day, I'm having a good day. We're going to celebrate. We're going to do what it do. You know, but like put the fun back in life, put the fun back in relationships. That's why I, that's what I love about. Um. Like they, I think it was like in the nineties. Y'all helped me out. House party and all of the movies. That was back in the. I'm pretty sure it was back in. Yeah, that was back in the nineties. But like, that's the type of love. See, it was depicted in movies because it was real. That had to come from somewhere. Every movie you see, no matter whether it be cartoon or whatever, all the movies come from real life ideas and or real life situations. And like that real, that real love, like that still exists and it can exist, but it's not depicted in front of us, especially on social media no more. A lot of hate is being pushed. A lot of differences are being pushed. A lot of agendas are being pushed. But when you really start diving into that real love and that real relationship and you really like try to because that's one thing. Think about back when you was younger and all this other extra stuff didn't matter. And you were just trying to, you know, like you had a friend and like y'all was really close. Oh, man, you rock with the dude and y'all really started dating. It's like, man, I'm like, it's like I'm dating my best friend. That can still happen now. It just takes time. You know, like put the work. That's why they say all relationships is work and the work really starts after you get married. It, it I mean, it starts really from day one. If you want to put that perspective of what it really starts when you get married and sign papers, that's on you. That's really on you. But at the end of the day, I feel as though you should be. I ain't going to say act as though you're married before you're married, but you should be grooming yourself for that. If you're serious about that other person, I'm not talking about courting or talking and flirting and trying to get to know somebody that's different. I'm talking about we already got into a relationship. We're exclusive. You know, and the more you try to build that bond with that person, and that's another thing too. Do that before you get married. A lot of people try to wait till they get married to change somebody, or they they're pushing for marriage to try to change somebody. The whole point of courting and dating people is to figure out if you're compatible with them. All these people they got in the world, and you strung up behind somebody. All these people in the world, I'm not about to sit here and try to force you to like me and force you to want to be with me and force you to. I no. If you if you don't like me for me and if you're not trying to grow with me from the rip and we don't have a cool connection, you know how many people they got in this planet? I'm good. I go go live your life. But we so tied up on, oh, man, that's my type. Oh, that, that person look like this. Oh, they got this going on, blah, 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 blah. And say you get that, but then you're not happy in your relationship and you're trying to let all the external things that they do have fill the gaps and the holes of what you should have dealt with to begin with. And let me tell you something. That stuff, man, look. As the years go by, you're going to realize one that don't matter. And two, the real core foundation of relationships that last is real friendships, real understanding, real communi real communications, real good times. You know, like I'm a excuse me, I'm to myself, but I, I like when I'm with my partner, you know, I like to be myself. You know, it's like I want to 
I like the movie Nights, even though I'm not really like she. I grant I I got to give it to Amber. For all y'all don't know, Amber is my girlfriend. Today we made uh, this our anniversary. We made three years today. She said send link to me so I can watch on lunch. I got you. Um, we made three years today. Today is our anniversary, and I'm not gonna sit here in front like it was all good and everything from the. Well, not, I'm not gonna say like it was bad, but like you know it wasn't perfect from the jump. But the amount of time we took into just being friends first, you know, I've been knowing that girl since elementary, literally. And like, you know, the time we took to being friends and getting to know each other and doing this and doing that in the third. And like when you when we finally made it official and started working on what we needed to work on. Thank you, Miss Karen. Um, and starting to work on what we needed to work on and stuff like that. The relationship just keeps doing this. It keeps getting better. And and I even watched that through my parents, you know, like my parents, they that's one thing they real. My parents never really hid too much. From me when it comes down to their relationship before during before or during their their marriage right now and you know and it's like a lot of those stories that they told me a lot of those life lessons that they told me helped me to even move better in my relationships now because they showed me that it isn't always sunny you know and but the days that is not sunny you know it's good to have your umbrella because when it starts raining you need something to protect you from the rain but nine times out of ten it's typically external forces that's coming in trying to deal with y'all and that's trying to shake things up or somebody just not communicating, you know, and once you start communicating and once you start really getting everything together and you really start being one on one and real with your partner, because my thing is this, if I'm going, I'm gonna just keep it a buck with you. If I'm gonna have sex with you, I should be able to talk with you. If I'm gonna be laying up in the bed and paying all these bills and stuff like that with you and we trying to have a life together, I should be able to talk to you. I should be able to come to you for anything. I should be able to tell you my deepest, darkest secrets. I should be able to show you my ugly side and my good side. And if I can't do that, that's nothing. Stop having sex with people that you can't really like be yourself with. Oh, it's just casual sex. I'm just using this person for blah, 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 blah. Now I realize that's a whole exchange. You know, like some people you're built for it. Oh, well, like I can have sex with somebody and I don't have to catch feelings. It's not even about catching feelings. That's the that's so big. That is so basic in the in the realm of 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 of, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, sex and relations and stuff like that. Like, there's so many subconscious and spiritual things that transfer when you have sex with somebody to where it's like you can play with that if you want. Who's that? What's going on, Sean? You can play with that if you want to, and you can feel as though you're on top of the world if you want to, and you got it in control. But notice, just notice how people. They start living like a player lifestyle or they start doing this, that, and the third. They never satisfied with their life. They never really happy. They are they never could really find the one. Are they coping? Are they insecure about something? That's both men and women. It, it goes the same for both sides. You know, so you just have to be real. Just think about the life we would live if we were more careful with who we gave our bodies to. Because you you gotta think about it. You and not to get too graphic, but I mean we gotta talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. You gotta, especially from a woman's standpoint. Everything about a woman when it comes down to intercourse and stuff like that is about being vulnerable, being open and receiving, you know, so like it's a lot more than just receiving what's going on, you know, but I get too explicit. But it's like you got to understand that that person is a lot more than just their member. That person has a spirit. That person has things that's on them. That person has life they're going through. What's going on, cuz? Um, so whenever that so whenever they're going through these things and whenever like y'all going through the motions and stuff like that, you're imparting. You're giving back. It's a full circle. No matter how you want to look at it. You can go look at the Karma Sutra. You go look at the Bible. You go look at all these other books. This, that, and the third. Holistic health books about sex and all of that. It's all the same. Every book says the same thing. It's always an exchange. And it doesn't. What's going on? Good morning, Joy. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an even exchange, too. That's another thing people don't realize. Like, whenever you start dealing with this type, these type of things, and you start dwelling in these type of relationships and interactions, you never really know what you're getting from the other person. That's why I say be mindful. And I'm and look, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from just no book, this, that, and the third. Man, when I got to college, I got wild. I ain't even going to lie to you. But I, it took me going through that, realizing that, doing what I had to do, and really honing myself back in to realize, okay, that's how this works. That's how that works. All right, cool. Let me move forward how I need to move. Let me be mindful about what I do with this, that, and the third. And what's going on, Kimmy? My sister up in here. Um, and when you start being more mindful about those type of situations, your life gets that much better because you don't have all these external forces coming through you and trying to operate through you and then you got more weight. Like we talked about the other day with the weight, like getting the weight up off your shoulders and stuff like that. That's why I say be mindful. And for the men that's watching, man, y'all really take care of y'all women because especially as black men, y'all know that's not where we come from. Well, we out here abusing women, we out here mistreating women, and we out here not taking care of our village. Y'all already know. When you really do your research and you go back and look, we not like them cave people. 
there's us, there's these K people, and there's all this other stuff. Now, I don't have time to, to dive into all of that. But y'all know we come from, like, just think about it. When we really tap back in to that realm of ideology and that way of living and that reciprocity starts coming from man to woman, from mother to child, from mother to father, and we start rebuilding all that type of stuff. Imagine how, how y'all think, prime example, how y'all think Black Wall Street came to be? There was unity. There was understanding. There was uh, reciprocity. There was a cycle. There was a cycle. There was a system. Now we know the W's, like my uh, like my uh, my aunt said. You know, you got some W's that that don't want to see us prosper. You know, and like and you can go look back at it. There's there's actual documentation of showing how these people burned down the towns and bombed this and did that off of lies at that. You know, from la last time I checked when I was reading up on it, and I was watching the documentary. Black Wall Street was at the original Black Wall Street was really torn down because uh, it was a, a kid, a black kid in the elevator with a white woman. And she lied and said that he assaulted her or something like that. And then, you know, the uh, the black family stood up for their child, you know, and then so oh, well, we don't like that. So they bombed the community and did this, that and the third. And of course, nobody went punished for it. But, you know, that's that's the world that we somewhat still live in today because it's just a, it, they don't lynch us anymore, but they still lynching us. It's politically and it's, it's externally inside the world. But that's a, that, like I said, it's another video. We'll talk about that later. But what I'm getting back at is so once we get back into that flow, once we get back into that harmonic rhythm between families and friends and knowing how to move this, that, and the third, things get better. Life gets easier and we start flowing better as a community. You know, it's a lot. Like I said before, it, it starts with us. It starts with you. Just like we said at the beginning of this video, start analyzing your dreams. Start watching, like I said the other day, start watching who and what you enter entertain. Start watching and being more mindful of what's going on around you and how things are moving. Start being more mindful of what you feel as though is real and what is not real in your life and the people that's real and the people that's not real inside of your life. Because the moment that you take your focus off or you get too comfortable, like Future, like future said, better not get too comfortable because when you do, stuff start happening. You got people skin. That's the thing. Don't think you're too small. I feel like a lot of people feel as though they're this small and you are really if you're alive and you're breathing you are very important you play a huge world you play you play a huge role in this world you know so don't ever think that you can just put your guard down or you can like and i'm not saying be closed off to the world i'm just saying be aware just don't don't put the blinders on because whenever you do and you get too comfortable things start happening now you didn't take four steps back and every two steps you take forward you take three steps back oh what's going on Kira? i didn't even know you was up here what's going on key um but yeah, like, yeah, like you got to make sure that you stay focused and you stay vigilant, you know, because it'd be the moments to where we drop our guard or like, or like we, well, let me, I keep saying drop my guard, but I really want you guys to understand it before I move on. So when I say dropping our guards or just in general, having your guard up, I'm not saying be closed off. I'm not saying be, be tight and be, how do you say that? I can't say that on here. <laughs> with being tight but to people mean you have a tight behind. You always, you know, you walk around with like this look on your face and stuff like that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, be just be mindful, be aware. You can have a great day and still be yourself while being aware, you know. But I feel as though as as the people that we are today, like I said the other day, we've strayed so far away from our natural and spiritual rights, our rights, our spiritual rights as people to where we don't really know how to operate in duality at the same time. Because you're supposed to be operating in spirituality and physicality all at the same time, day by day. But most people do not know how to function. Why? Because we're so distracted. We don't take the time. And that's the thing. Finding yourself and finding, and finding your spiritual balance, it ain't as deep as you think it is. I was. Is, it might be in my notes. Is it in my notes? Let me see. I want to I wanna make sure I quote this the right way. Because I said I was writing this down. Y'all had woke up at like 2.30 this morning out of nowhere. And y'all know me, if I, if I feel as though God woke me up, ran, because I don't be waking up at no 2.30 in the morning, because everybody know 3 o'clock in the morning is witchcraft hours. So, I no, I'm good on that. But, there you go. But if you, if, yeah, if I feel as though I got I got woke up for a reason, man, look, I'm going to wake up and I'm either, I'm going to look around, I'm going to pray, I'm going to do whatever, I'm going to be aware. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Man, don't tell me I didn't write that down. I might have sent it off. Blocking or sit. Where is it at? Stand the path of sinners. Mm. Console wiki. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? The tree planet. I can't find it, y'all. Let's see. Blessed. Ah, ha, ha. There it goes. It says, bless, which means fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God, is the man who does not walk in the council, which is the advice, especially the given formality of the wicked, and are stand in the path of sinners. So with that being said, it's like, 
it's not that hard to please God. Even if, okay, let's strip the Bible, let's strip the Bible away from it. It's not that hard to please the person that made everything or to flow in that spiritual world. Because once you really be mindful and really walk in being blessed and really walk into just reality, when you put your phone down, you know what I started doing? I don't really, unless I really have to be like answering business calls and stuff like that. I'm not really on my phone in public no more, especially when I'm driving, especially when I'm in stores. Prime example, prime example. Last night. All right. We was in the Hobby Lobby and I just, something felt off. Something just felt real off. And there was this man. I noticed it was like, was following us from aisle to aisle. I was like, am I tripping? And for all my family and friends up in here that know me, I stay ready to fight. I'm still, the law is still working on me. You know, I ain't, I ain't all the way there yet, but look, I don't, I don't, I don't miss out on a chance to run the fade. I really don't. I got two clippers right here. But anyways, is I, I, I thought I was tripping. I was like, ain't no way, ain't no way do following this like that. So we going from the fabric, each fabric aisle to the fabric aisle because we're about to do some stuff to the furniture in the front. We, um, reupholstering the chairs and redoing all the decorations. We got this big dog on 10, 12 foot mirror. I think heaviest dog. I don't, I don't know why she got that, but we're going from aisle to aisle. And my sense is just like, yo, be aware. I'm like, what's going on? So, and I look and I see him. He got his little cap on. If y'all watch the, the Netflix series, you, y'all know how Joe be putting that little cap on and he be walking and he be like that. When he really be scoping the game out trying to be secretive. That's how old dude was. And I'm sitting there like, nah. Nah, I was like, but someone was like, keep your eye on him. I was like, all right, cool bet. So, you know, she talking about, this would look nice. And they look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking. And ironically, she's like, well, let's go to the next aisle. And she said it loud enough, right? Now, he's so say in the middle of the aisle planning his fabrics and stuff like that. And we go and we go to the um, to the next aisle or whatever. Not even three steps later, here he come. And so y'all know me. I'm a I'm the type of person where, like, I may not start it, but I'll finish it. Or I'm going to play your little game if you want to play. And, like, so, I, you know, I pushed her to the side. I got right there. I stood up and I looked at him like this. Cause I, I see you, I see you looking, you know, I, I see you trying to invade and I see you look like you scheming. So just in case I'm right here, if you, if you, you know, I'm right here. So that happened. Right. And I would, and on the, it could, it could have go one of two ways. One, I could be right. And he go about his business or something pop off or two, you know, I'd be wrong. And then dude be like, well, what you looking at? Blah, blah. You know, like it, it can go a lot of ways, but you know, I'd be prepared for it all. So, you know, I gave him the look and I'm, I'm not walking to him, but I'm walking closer. Like, okay, I'm right here. And then he hit he one of these. He looked down and he just walked off. But you told on yourself. But say I wasn't walking in my duality. If I wasn't walking in my spirituality and my senses, you know, I wouldn't have been able to pick up on that. Say dude had other plans. Say dude was trying to really watch us till we go back in the car or get out of the store and go do something. You know, then now I'm really up. And if y'all know anything else about me, I keep that thing on me because you got to keep that thing on you. You know, and say I wasn't prepared. You know what I'm saying? It's like, say I wasn't already in that mindset of protect and provide and let something would have happened and I would have been caught slipping. So not something else. Would, you know what I'm saying? But it's good to walk in your duality. It's not that hard. You know, if you get them little senses of, OK, I got to be aware. Or if you get them sense of, oh, I don't feel like you ever been somewhere. It's like, man, I'm not comfortable in here. It don't feel right in here. You know, like that's your sign to get up out there and dip like you got to go. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Keely? I didn't know Keely was up. What's up, Keely? Um, that's your sign to go, you know, and if you're not, if you're not really listening to that type of stuff and if you're not really tapped in and tuned in, what time we at? We still got 20 more minutes, good. And if you're not tapped into all of that stuff that you need to be tapped into and you're just oblivious to the world and you're always on your phone and stuff like that and you ain't really tapped into your senses and stuff like that, like you, prime example, Kiara, my cousin that's in here right now, like her parental senses, and she's an analytical person in general, but her parental senses, top tier. Like that girl be picking up on stuff. She'd be like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, but when you tapped in and when you in tune with your spirit and your child, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not that hard, but you got people that don't know how to walk in it. You got people that feel as though they don't know how, or they don't really try to listen to those things. That's really, that's really trying to get you to go in like, like, just like I was talking about earlier about dissecting your dreams if y'all and i see a lot of new people up in here i don't know i don't know how long y'all been up in here but after this please go back and watch the beginning because we started talking about hey miss kelly we started talking about um uh dreams and how to dissect them and what certain things mean we talked about two common dreams that most people have and i broke it down a little bit for you guys so go back and watch that when you got time but um i say all this to say basically be aware let's start being aware let's start really walking in harmony let's really start walking and tapping into our spirituality because there's whether people want to agree on it or not, there's a lot of warfare going on around us. 
you know, and I'm not even trying to get biblical because like that. And that's one thing I don't like. And that's the reason, one reason why I created this space like this. It's not, excuse me, it's not always about church and about the Bible. It's about just talking real life because people associate the spirit world with either witchcraft or the Bible. This, that, and the third. The spirit world is the spirit world. No matter how you want to put it, no matter how you want to look at it, it exists. And we live, we are, we are vicariously living through it as we live into the natural every single day. As much as you want to agree with it or you don't agree with it, it is what it is. She said that's something I really need to work on, transparency. I feel like you, I feel like, I'm. well, you know, you know yourself better than I do. But I feel like, especially with me, let me tell y'all something. I wouldn't be half of Coach Brian if it wasn't for Kiara. Because Kiara be telling me about myself. Kiara going to send me stuff and she going to be like, where you at with it? How you, and like, and she'll tell me like if I'm, because she's one of the big, she's one of my biggest inspirations. Because like, Kiara is a hustler. A hustler. Like when I say I got family and people that's already doing it, so I don't really have no excuse. She's one of them people. Like gonna go get it, gonna go work hard. She gonna sacrifice. She gonna do it. You know. So it's like there's there's really no excuses, y'all. There's really no excuse when it come down to this. Either you do it or you don't. And don't feel. And that's the thing. Stop victimizing yourself. Uh, stop trying to look for you too, Keely. You saying this, Keely? You another one. You another one that be hustling. And Kimmy, if she's still up in here. But um, it's it's. Stop victimizing or try to victimize others for lack of our decisions that they make. People need to realize that everything, whether people, no matter how you did it or how you decide to do it, everybody makes a choice day by day. The people that hurt you made a choice to hurt you. The people that protected you and did right by you made that decision to do that. You did right. Like, say you don't play a, like like if you if you made a bad financial decision, this, that and the third, whether it be ignorant or not, you still made that choice and that decision. Reasons why I say tap in. Reasons why I say go back and look at your dreams. Reason why I say go back and translate all that stuff. And if you need, and if y'all need help, man, look, I got websites, I got books, man. I read stuff like this all day, you know. So it's like, hit me up. I'm here to help. That's why I'm doing this, you know. But like, let's stop straying away from being real with ourselves and our friends. That's one thing I love about my friends. They gonna tell me by myself. Because if I'm surrounded by people that can't tell me about myself or that can't pick up, like I got, I, here's the type of friends I got. Not only are they gonna tell me about myself. And I could tell them about themselves, but like, I ain't even got to tell you I'm having a bad day and they'll pick up on it. Hey, I'm just calling because I felt you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's the type of people you need in your circle. Not the people that's like feeling you because they need it. Cause there's a difference. You got people that, cause that they'll feel when you're having a bad day, but notice how they approach you when you having bad days. Are they approaching you to, cause one thing you got to watch out for, say you vent to a friend. And you talking about how bad your day is, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, girl, because he ain't acting right and blah, 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 blah. And she be like, yeah, girl, I know how it is. Because it, like every time you vent about something, they got to turn it and make it about them. Find you a friend that's going to listen. And if they do talk about themselves in a, in a, in a very similar situation, is to give you advice on it rather to make it about them. Because that's not, you're not, a real friend ain't going to sit there and turn everything you say uh, back into their world. A real friend is going to listen. It's going to give you whatever sound advice they feel like they need to give you. And then y'all gonna move forward about that. And not every, and that's the thing. Not every advice you get from everybody is something that you want to hear. But I love the fact that me personally, I'm surrounded by people that's gonna tell me what I need to hear rather than what I want to hear because people know I am somebody who is always in practice. So it's like if you giving me some, uh, I'm gonna check this later. If you if you're going to let me make sure it's not something for the comment section when you in the green call. I can't stand spam DMs. They could be getting on my I'll be just be blocking everybody. It'd be a block party every day. But if if you can't tell me about myself, if you can't give me sound advice and stuff like that, I don't need you around me. Because I'm the type of person to where it's like the friends that I hold dear, of course. And granted, I still meditate and pray on what they tell me. But like, if I feel as though I shouldn't have to question the advice they're going to give me, I'm going to put it into practice that fast. Because I'm the type of person, I like to hustle. I like to get things done. I like results. I like progression. I don't like being in the same place I was last year, yet alone last week, yesterday. I like moving forward. You know, and like, even though I didn't want to receive it, like, let's, let's back up to my last relationship. Even though I wasn't, I wasn't in the, I felt like I was truly brainwashed, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother segment. We'll talk about that tomorrow if y'all want to talk about that. But I felt as I was really brainwashed because I had my cousins, my mom, my pops, certain friends was like, yo, bro, you need to get up out that relationship and you need to get up out that church because this, that, and the third going on. Why you can't see this? Why, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, whenever I actually, when, when, when crap came, came to crap and everything just hit the fan, I was like, oh, and then I start thinking about everything that everybody told me, you know, it's like you just got to it's like, like I said before, you may not have wanted to hear that in the moment when you really sit back and think back on it. Remember stuff. Remember the friends that told you the truth, 
even though you know you all tangled up with this person emotionally and you sprung behind this person but when crap hit the fan and you know like they always like to say hindsight is twenty twenty, and you get up out that situation and you're like man i should have did this different man why i didn't see that coming but then you remember that friend that was like you need to watch out for him I, you know, I ain't trying to mess up your relationship but it's something it's something not right about him watch his people uh hey man you need to watch out for shorty so the way she carried herself and her friends and blah 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 you know it ain't right or whatever and y'all be thinking it's jealousy y'all be thinking it's this that and the third you know but you be so strung up behind some per uh some people sometimes to where you don't really see that and that's not always the case but what i'm saying is when that does happen mark those people because it's not i'm not gonna say it's not good to have a big circle but nine times out of ten if you have a really really big circle you gotta i'll put it to you oh ooh, okay a lot of people could be in your circle but not be in your corner and that's what I'm getting at. It's like, watch out for the people that's in your circle that really care for you and that's really there for you when the, when the crap hit the fan and when the chips didn't fell down and when you down and out, the people that's really in your corner, that's the friends. That's the people. And granted, people come and go. You know, you have seasons of when you have people, when you don't have people. Even friends that's been friends for 10 years or 10 plus years. Y'all have y'all ups and downs. Y'all have y'all moments where y'all not cool with each other and stuff like that. But that, hey, look, that's life. You got to remember that nobody's perfect. We have family members that we've been living with longer than that. We've been knowing longer than that. And we don't get along with some family members. So, yeah, it, it's natural for some friends to, like, not really, like, you know, really coincide with you at, at all times. But if you know nine times out of ten, a majority of the time that that friend's being real with you, that friend's telling you about yourself, that friend's there for you, that friend's, like, building you up and picking up on you when they need to and, like, just checking up on you, you even got to really ask for it, that's somebody you need to keep around. You know, because like I dare say, we got some friends that we think is friends and they real life angels. God got some angels in our lives that we think is people. But God really like, nah, this is like you be like, oh, well, my guardian angel and blah, 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 blah. It really be some of your friends. It's rare that people really get to walk and talk and really have those type of friends these days because people just on some other type of stuff. They entertain all this other stuff and they, they get so tainted with all this other stuff that's going on. But when you got them real angels in your life, bro. Like for real, like you need to hold on to those people. And you need to hold on to those, hold on to those things because the times that we living in, bro, is few and far behind. Like for real, life is passing by. Time is passing real fast, you know. So if you got a if you got a whole bunch of people in your circle, but you ain't got nobody in your corner, get out the circle. Go make you another circle. Or pray, or pray for a new circle. Let God bring them to you, because I'm telling you, bro, I didn't I didn't been in that situation more than once. So I'm sitting there thinking I got friends and at the end of the day, they trying to get at your girl. They trying to get at you. They got other moves. They try to get at certain people in your family. They got bad where, you know, they jealous. They trying to rip stuff from you. They see what you got going on. They trying to use you. We talked about that the, the other day. Some people, and you got some people, I ain't even going to say sponge because I'm a sponge, but I'm a good sponge. But like you got some people that, that are literal leeches. I'm talking about and, and, and do it well. And that's, that's the part that blow my mind. They will leech on to you for years play their role so perfectly and you would and you never but we never put certain things in question because they're they just so happen to be there when they need to be there and stuff like that but when you dive a little bit deeper and start look i'm gonna sound crazy for what i'm about to say but i got tabs on all my friends not meaning like oh well you know I, I'm, I'm i'm chipping their houses and cameras but nah i got man look i write everything down i will sit there and like little off things it's like like everybody know like mark that that's what that's something i say mark that i'll be like okay noted that's like that's my phrases because like i have this this brain bro i may not remember names a lot but i have a photographic memory i could tell you what you woke i could tell you what you did all that what date it was all that type of stuff and like i don't forget stuff like that you know and care another one carrying expect no kimmy kimmy is another one kimmy can remember stuff from god when we was like two three years old and be on it like that you know but it's one of the things so it's like you have to do it because if not You'll find yourself going through the same cycles. Well, I'm trying to do this. This ain't happening. I'm trying to do blah, blah, blah. I mean, you got some people that associate your best friends and at the same time want to have sex with your husband. They after your children. They after your life. They leeching off of you. They praying against you. I'm trying. I don't Bro, look, I wasn't supposed to talk about this today. Whoever this for, y'all better grab this. Be mindful and be aware of who you around because I'm telling you, bro, like you, you trying to get to this next level. You're trying to boss up. You're trying to live your, your life. You're trying to set, set an example, all that type of stuff. And like, you just can't break past it. But like I said the other day, it ties into what we said. You can't open the door with two cinder blocks in your hand. How? You got to drop some dead weight. 
And once you drop that and you can reach open and open that door, guess what? Boom. Everything you've been waiting for is on the other side. But how can I do that when I feel as though, oh, I'm doing everything right. I'm hustling. I'm this, that, and the third. But the person that will be tied onto you or that you will bring through to the next level is not supposed to be there with you. Because prime example, say you somebody running a business or you have a big business opportunity and you in partnership with somebody or like a good friend that has been there and blah, 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 blah. But they're really not your friend, right? You don't know this yet. And but say you got the wrong person tied up to your destiny and y'all got this big business meeting and y'all supposed to go in there. Y'all going up and y'all dressed to the nines. You know, y'all hair done. Y'all looking good. Y'all got the business spreadsheet. Y'all got the Excel spreadsheet. Y'all know what y'all want to project. Y'all know what y'all want to say in this meeting. Y'all know what numbers y'all not falling for. Y'all didn't have a meeting. Y'all know what products y'all want to push. Y'all know what y'all want to do with the agenda and stuff like that. And then y'all get in the meeting and this person starts showing they behind. Not even you didn't lost your opportunity. You didn't work five, six, seven plus years to get to this table for this one meeting, but you got the wrong person holding on to you, that, that, that wrong person in your dead weight. So when you, the door by, you trying to open the door and then now that, you know, you can't open the door or now the door shut in your face and no telling how long it's going to be till you get the next opportunity because you had the wrong person around you. Be mindful of who's around you. Be mindful of your dreams. Be mindful of what you see in your dreams. Interpret all of that type of stuff. All them little morning affirmation stuff we be doing in the morning when we first get on this live stream. Let me tell you something. Do not take that lightly. How we ended the live stream uh, the other day when we was talking about hedges of protection and stuff like that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and watch it. Or at least go watch the ending when we really got into the meat and potatoes and everything. But like I'm, t I'm trying to tell y'all. It is, and I was not, that's how I know it's for somebody. I did not plan on talking about this. I want to talk about dreams and how to how to dissect them and stuff like that. Because the way my dreams been going, boy, I could I could write a whole book about dreams. But I'm I'm just I'm just feel I just feel so adamant to tell somebody whoever's in here, watch your circle. No, watch your corner. Because just because you got a circle don't mean they there for you. Just because you got people you could get drunk with and you could have fun with, yeah, that's cool. But and that's another that's another thing. I don't know who this fuck, because y'all know I don't drink. Watch, you know what you should do? I don't know who this for. Next time y'all going out to have a good time, act like you're drinking. Don't really drink. Act like you're drinking, act like you're drunk, and watch. Watch how, watch how your friends act. Watch how they act towards you. Watch the questions they ask you. Watch how they flowing with you. Watch where they take you. Watch what they start doing. Watch it. Watch if they always pulling their phone out and trying to. And that's another thing, too. Stop recording people for every little thing when y'all out there having a good time. Like, look, y'all know me. I'm camera happy. I love good moments. But I take my few pictures and, and uh, my important pictures and I put that phone up. I take my moments. I put my phone. Up. You got people that really be FBI in the corner like this on their phone while you on a party. See you on a party bus and they in the corner on the phone like this. Always lurking, looking, snapping pictures, eh, faking their little Snapchats and really getting some intel. I'm telling y'all, I don't know who this for, but you better watch who in your corner because not the level that you're trying to get to tom dick and harry can't be there susan mary joe can't be there you gotta man look some doors you gotta walk through alone and i know it can be scary because coming from me the type of family that i have we we are each other's um support system i didn't ask my aunt to open up you know her building for me whenever things i don't have a building for my uh coach brian stuff right now i do a lot of one-on-ones i go meet people or they come to my uh my house i turn my back area into like a um uh he said, I wonder why I club at my house. Cause you funny. But that's true, though. Uh, I have all my weights and stuff in the little shed I renovated back there and stuff like that. We meet up at the park and all of that. But, you know, I never asked her like, oh, well, you know, can I use your building? You know, it's getting cold and blah, 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 blah. She was like, hey, you know, when you got time, I want to talk with you. She talked with me. You know, we talk business, blah, blah, blah. Ain't none of your business. You know, and then like you know, we got a little, a little situation going on, a little good situation going on. You know, but it's, it's like that's the people that you got to be in tune with. That's the people that, you know, you got to take care of and like. That's the support system. But if you got people in your circle that see you struggling, that see you going through, that see you going through a divorce, or see you going through a breakup, that see you going through financial trouble, this, that, and the third, and they can't even give you a hey, hello, a goodbye, a checkup on, or something like a scripture, a prayer, or something, what you doing in my circle? And that's not, to, I'm not saying use people because I, I don't feel like that's using people. But I feel as though if you're going to be my friend, when you look at the, man, let's look this junk, let's look this up. Because I, I, I know I ain't capping, hold up. We're going to look this up because we got like five minutes and we're going to end with this because I got to go train Miss Wallace, y'all. The definition of a friend. And we're going we gonna to end with that. I know I type hard. Leave me alone. Don't be don't be judging me. I feel y'all judging me through the screen right now. I know I type hard. Y'all going to leave me alone. The definition of a friend is a person whom one knows and with one. Man, why are you trying to be smart with these words? And with <laughs> whom one has a bond of mutual 
mutual, another word for mutual, another act of being mutual is reciprocity. Um, mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. They they had me at mutual. They had me there. Because how how is it? And that look, I don't be look, I don't be keeping tabs of blessings. I don't track blessings. I don't, I don't give seeds just to, you know, just to say I did this, that, and the third. But I am mindful now. You ain't about to sit there and use me like a dog on ATM, but you ain't never making no deposits. But you always pulling some money from me if y'all catch what I'm saying. When it comes down to people in my doggone circle, man, look, I'm your friend yet. But at the same time, if I can't even get so much as a hello or a good word from y'all, some support, what are you doing? Cause I could be associates with a bunch of people. I could I could be cool with a bunch of people. You could be my associate. That's fine. I don't expect nothing from an associate. But if you're my friend, you gotta come on, man. It gotta be some give and take. You reap what you sow. And I'm not about to be out here sowing good deeds and sowing support and sowing this, that, and the third. Now, granted, you know I'm a good person. I'll do it. But like once once guy give me that that red that red flag, hey, bro, you need to chill out. It's like you sowing, and I'm going to bless the good sowings that you did because your intentions was good behind it. But you got to, and that's another thing, you got to watch what you're sowing into. Because that the harvest got to, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, that harvest always got to come back some type of way. You know, so just be real mindful. What time? How much time we got? We got three more minutes. Um, We're going to just shut it down, y'all. But like we normally do, let's end it the right way. All right, y'all repeat after me. I am unstoppable. I am Walking into my next level. I am in my next season. I am a walking blessing. That's for somebody. I am, we're going to say that again, a walking blessing. I attract supernatural abundance. I bind poverty. I bind insufficiency. I walk in abundance. I walk in prosperity i am above i am strong finally i am loved and i love myself say it again i love myself one more time i love myself because the most important if y'all don't remember anything else i said today with the, the little two minutes i got left before i gotta get on the road you have to love yourself People talk about it all the time. People like to say this, that, and the third about love and all that and how what it could be, what it ain't, blah, blah, blah. Find a way to love yourself. Find a way to love yourself. Whatever brings love to you from yourself, whatever brings happiness to you from yourself, whatever brings light to you from yourself, whatever brings peace of mind to you by yourself, love on yourself. Because there's, you can't tell somebody else or show somebody else how to love you and treat you right if you don't even know how to love and treat yourself right. And I'm going to end y'all with that. I love y'all. Y'all have a good one. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 815. Also, um, click the link that I have in the caption above. Once again, check out all the products. If y'all want to donate, y'all go donate and do that. Um, thank you for everybody who's uh, wishing me a happy anniversary on today. I love y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow. God bless. Y'all be cool.